Yo, what's up guys, so today we are gonna see, what if, Naruto was in charge of Kanoichi and, and got massive harem, part 1, hope you'll enjoy this video, so before we start, go check out the author of this fanfic, MZ Kitty Cat, link is in the description, and also subscribe to my channel, and like this video. Damn it Irosenin. Are we there yet screamed the frustrated blonde youth at the older man he was accompanying. Shut your mouth you damn brat. We're nearly there. And another thing. Stop calling me that in public. Jirei replied back angrily at his student, as they made their way past the puzzled shinobi guards towards the village of Hidden Leaf, Kanahagakur. Elsewhere. You're really leaving Shizun-sama? Asked Haruno Sakura sadly. She didn't want her fellow medic colleague to leave the inn. I'm not really leaving Sakura-san, I just won't be around most of the time. Shizun explained to the pink-haired Kanoichi. But then who would take care of the inn? Yamanaka Ino asked. Worried about being stuck cleaning after the elder, Mirashi Anko. The rest of the girl also shared the same thought. Anko wasn't really particularly hard to live with. It's the mess that's usually left behind that's the problem. Depending mostly on what mood the special was in. I've talked about it with Hokage-sama. Since I won't really have time to fulfill the duties of managing the place, Tsunade-sama informed me that another shall take over the place. I will still live in the inn, but as a tenant. Not, as the, manager, Shizun explained. So in other words you'll be replaced. Anko replied back lazily. She didn't really feel like attending the meeting, but she was now rather interested in the discussion. Especially if her friend no longer runs the place. She will be at risk of losing her room, since no one wants to let a special person like her rent a place. It was her overwhelming reputation that needs to be blamed, not that she minds either way what the village thought of her. I'm afraid so, Yuhikura and I answered for Shizun. But she can understand why Anko was now interested in the discussion. Her childhood friend was still suffering from prejudice from the village, but she was glad that Shizun was still going to live with them. Ah oh, no, I don't understand why you can't remain, as our manager. I mean you will still be staying with us right? Hayuga Hinata asked. I'm afraid that with all my workload, as Tsunade Sama's assistant, and working at the hospital, I can no longer maintain my duties, as. It gets a little too much, and it's taking a lot out of me. Shizun answered honestly. She was always exhausted, and there are times that she just wants to just relax, and rest without dealing with any more paperwork or worrying about the inn's bills. The other girls seem to understand this. They all do try, and do their share in maintaining the inn, but with their missions, it just gets too hard sometimes to find time or even spend time for themselves. They also knew close to nothing about doing some repairs, but they really had no other place to go. They all got used to living with each other, and had become, as close, as sisters to one another. So Shizun-san, any idea who our next Karen Rin would be? Sabaku Tamari asked. I have no idea. But then again knowing Tsunade Sama, I'm pretty sure she will not choose just anybody to entrust the inn. Shizun answered, but felt awkward when a strange chill ran up and down her spine. I hope so. Shizun whispered to herself. So when do we get to know who will be our new? Tenten asked excitedly. She hopes that the new manager will be as cool as Shizun was. She will let me know today. That's why I have been asked to inform you girls. Shizun explained. Isn't it a bit late to tell us you're being replaced on the same day? Enko replied back rather annoyed at the last minute notice. I know, and I'm sorry, but this is the only time I can get all of us here. The rest of the time everyone was away on their own missions or were elsewhere. Shizun explained. This is the only time I could gather all of us together without having to repeat myself or ask someone else to relay the message. Makes sense to me. Tamari shrugged. Just then they heard the summoning bird from outside. I guess I have to go now. I guess I need to meet with the new. I'll see you girls later. Shizun replied back before disappearing with a puff of smoke. Leaving the rest of the girls to talk about the recent turn of events. You want me to what? Naruto exclaimed. Jiraiya had dragged him to the Hokage Tower. Informing him that Tsunade wanted to speak to him. Naruto didn't really know what to expect, but he certainly didn't expect this. Tsunade just sighed. You heard me. Fighting the urge to get irritated at the young blonde. He had recently come back, and she had missed him dearly, but not even five minutes had passed since he had entered her office, and she was already on the verge of strangling the hyperactive boy. But that's just wrong. It sounds like what Iro Senin would do. Naruto once again exclaimed, as he pointed at his perverted mentor, in case she had missed his point. Yureya on the other hand was amused. He had to give it to Tsunade. She sure knows how to surprise the number one surprising ninja. He let Naruto's barb slide for now. After all, his little protege was going to live in a Kanoichi inn, filled with one of Kanoha's most beautiful, and dangerous Kanoichis. He couldn't be any prouder of him than this moment. All he had to do was convince his young apprentice to take the job. After all, if Naruto was staying there, that means he could stay there too. Yuria began to blush at the more explicit pictures entered his mind, and began to giggle rather deviously. Think of all the data he could gather from the Kanoichi inn. Tsunade's eyes began to twitch at the sight of her former teammate. She can already guess what he was thinking. 
She was also getting annoyed at Naruto. While she was relieved that the boy was back and seemed to have been immune to her colleague's perverted habits, his constant rebuttal of her decision was getting on her nerves. She was godding. Only Naruto had the nerve to ever argue with her and question her judgment. All the more reason for you to stay at the inn. You need to protect them from your sensei. Tsunade responded, raising her voice to get her point across to Naruto as she slammed her palms against her desk, almost breaking it in the process. But I'm a guy. Naruto protested angrily, stopping his foot for emphasis. Do you have anywhere else to stay? Tsunade asked him, already knowing the answer. She knew his place was sold long ago, and she doubts that any inns or real estate would let him rent a place. The village still held a huge grudge against him. She knew he also knew too well. No, but, no buts. I'm the Hokage, and my word is final. Tsunade replied back, cutting off Naruto's protests. Go with it Naruto. Think of yourself, and your sensei. Jirei replied back, encouraging Naruto to accept Tsunade's offer. I am. That's why I'm not going to accept this. Besides they will kill me. Before turning his attention once again to Tsunade. Have you ever thought of that? You're going to make me live in an inn full of dangerous kanoichis. Hot kanoichis Naruto. Extremely hot and dangerous kanoichis. Jiraiya commented before Naruto's fist came in contact with his face. I don't care. I'm going to die. Naruto panicked, ignoring the massive dent at the wall across the room, where his punch had plastered Jiraiya against, knocking the old pervert unconscious, and slightly twitching. Don't you even care that you're sending me to my death? He asked Tsunade, as tears began to flow from his eyes. Yer yer Naruto. Don't be so negative. I'm sure Shizun will not let anything happen to you, and, as for Jiraiya, don't worry too much Naruto, your sensei will not be staying with you. Tsunade explained not looking at Naruto directly because she was still vulnerable to his puppy eye dog look. She knew as she looked at him, at his sad big blue eyes, she might give in, and actually find another place to put him in. Which only means more paperwork for her, that she really doesn't need. What? Both males cried out in unison. Yurei regained consciousness, and just heard he will not be living with Naruto. Tears literally became like waterfalls, as he pondered at the cruelty of such beauties being denied to him. Yureya, I need to speak to you about another mission. Naruto, this discussion is over, Tsunade replied back in her most commanding voice. She then began to call another ninja to escort Naruto outside her office. I will be with you shortly. She told him. Before Naruto could protest, Tsunade just pointed at the door. The look she sent him broke no arguments unless he wanted to be knocked out through the walls of the Hokage Tower. So with a very undignified snort, he stomped outside the room. Letting his anger and annoyance build up, he can continue arguing with Tsunade once she is finished with Jiraiya. What do you mean I can't live with Naruto? I'm his guardian. Jiraiya whined, thinking of lost opportunities, as his mind began playing images of Kuranai, Anko, and Shizun in seductive poses, wearing little clothing. He unconsciously began to drool at the thought. Tsunade ignored Jiraiya's whining, and became very serious. Jiraiya I've heard rumors that Sound is trying to have an alliance with Akatsuki. Do you know anything about it? Yuri also became serious after hearing the news. I. My contacts have told me that Sound is planning on having an alliance with Akatsuki, only so they can get their hands on the Jinchuriki. So far there is no proof on how accurate this rumor is. Jiraiya explained solemnly. I was afraid of this. Does Naruto know? Tsunade asked. Naruto was now family to her. She would lose the will to live if something happened to him. It was Naruto that gave her the strength to live, and the reason to keep living. Without him. Her existence would be meaningless, as before. No. He has no idea, Jirei replied back. He really did feel sorry for Naruto. It seems the fate really dealt him a bad hand. I want you to deal with this. Find out everything you can. I can't let this rumor go unscrutinized. Tsunade ordered. What about Naruto? Jirei asked. What about him? Are you going to tell him about this? Jirei prodded. Wondering if she will let Naruto know that the threat to his person has the probability of increasing if the rumor was true. No. Tsunade answered truthfully. Naruto deserves a break from all the chaos that surrounds them. He had already seen far too much of the world. Experienced far too much cruelty. He needs to relax more and spend some time with his peers. To let himself enjoy it for once. To be normal. I see Jirei replied. He knew why Tsunade would like Naruto to stay in the village. She may not see it, but she was subconsciously being selfish. She had not seen Naruto for such a long time. He had seen the sparkle in her eyes while she conversed argued with the boy. She had missed him, and was afraid of losing him again so soon, not when they had just recently returned. Go now. Tsunade ordered. Very well. With a smirk Jiraiya disappeared with a puff of smoke, making the necessary preparations, and plans for another dangerous mission. Meanwhile. Naruto waited anxiously for any sign of his sensei. He was still hoping against hope that while Jiraiya was in there with Tsunade, he would be able to change her mind about his living quarters. 
He was surprised out of his thoughts when he sensed another presence made itself appear before him. His body tensed, as many years of training made him ready for any incoming threats. All that rushed in his mind was the instinct to fight. The only thoughts entering his mind that was controlling his body were two simple words. Friend or foe. The puff of smoke appeared a couple of meters away from him. With the smoke dissipated, it left an image of a woman. A woman he barely recognized. His body still tensed. Ready for any sudden moves. Shizun appeared teleported just outside of Tsunade's office. She sensed another's presence nearby. As the smoke faded gradually, she could make out a head full of spiky untamable blonde hair. Followed closely by the bluest intense eyes, and the weird whisker marks upon his cheeks. Upon seeing these features, Shizun yelped in joy, and tackled the young man before him. Naruto. Shizun cried out in glee, as she glomped on the confused youth. Gah. Can't breathe. Naruto uttered, as he began to turn slightly blue. Too stunned, and unprepared for the woman despite his earlier stance. R. Oh. Sorry about that Naruto-kun. It's been so long. Shizun released Naruto from her arms, slightly blushing, as she noticed how much Naruto had changed. He had grown taller, and more muscular. He had lost most of his baby fat, and judging from her hug earlier, she can say that was now replaced with raw muscles. His hair has grown longer too. Similar to Jurei except it's not too long, and is tied in a low ponytail. He no longer wore his orange jacket, but was wearing a black singlet with an orange whorl in the middle. He also wore silver bracers on his wrists. Shizun smirked when he noticed his pants. He still wore orange pants, but wore black combat boots with it. Naruto studied the woman in front of him. He suddenly recognized the woman. It's Shizun. He wanted to hit himself for not recognizing her sooner. She still looked the same, and still wore the same style kimono, but to him she was as lovely as the day he had first met her. How are you doing Shizun Nichin? He asked her. It has been three years after all. Though he did send a couple of letters, they were mostly mission reports. I'm fine Naruto-kun. I'm so glad you're back. Shizun replied back before Hagi and Kotetsu interrupted them. Naruto, Gutim Sama asks that you go to this address. Kotetsu instructed. This will be the address where you will be staying at. Naruto pouted. You mean she's serious? She didn't change her mind. He asked the bandage Chunin. I guess not. Kotetsu answered sympathetically, but deep down inside he was slightly jealous of the blonde's luck. What's wrong with Naruto-kun? Trouble already. Shizun asked curiously. You can say that. It's great to see you Shizu Nichin, but I guess I better head off to face my maker, Naruto said solemnly, as he picked up his huge pack. I'll see you later Nichin. Maybe we can catch up later once I'm more settled in, Naruto said, as he smiled at her. Sure Naruto. I would love that, Shizun answered, as the two parted ways. Kotetsu then accompanied the blonde shinobi towards the exit. Shizun then entered Tsunade's office eager to find out who Tsunade appointed to be the next manager of the Kanoichi Inn. Naruto meanwhile walked along the streets of Kanoha. Remembering the many sights and places, as he navigated his way towards the inn that he's meant to stay at. Hopefully Tsunade had already called the Kanoichis, and had already explained his case to them. Besides, it was her fault after all therefore it was her responsibility to let them know that he's coming. In the back of his mind, he wondered what had happened to his perverted mentor. He assumed that his perverted mentor probably made another inappropriate comment, and was probably knocked out by one of Tsunade's punches. Naruto chuckled, as he pictured Jiraiya's chaotic form. He came to a stop, as he saw the street that the map indicated. He looked at the street name and number, and stood outside on the road. In front of him was a flight of stone concrete stairs that seemed to go on and on. On top of the stairs stood a massive establishment. He took a deep breath. This is it. He thought to himself. He then began to make his way up the stairs and towards the inn. You what? Shizun could not believe what she had just heard. You heard me Shizun. Tsunade replied calmly to her assistant. But that's crazy. Shizun exclaimed. Crazy? Tsunade questioned. A telltale twitch appeared in her eye, warning Shizun to watch her next words carefully. Shizun got a hold of herself, and tried to control her outburst, as Tsunade was not in the most pleasant of moods. With all due respect Tsunade Sama, why on earth would you appoint Naruto, as the manager of the Kanoichi Inn? Shizun asked, curious, as to why Tsunade would do such a thing. Tsunade took a deep breath, and sighed. Shizun, Naruto has nowhere else to live. We all know that the villagers still hold some sort of animosity towards him because of the Kayubi. I doubt he will have any luck finding a place to live right now. But Tsunade Sama. Besides, you will be there to look after him. I know Naruto. Despite the many years he had spent with Jiraiya, I doubt he managed to corrupt him. Also if he does try anything, the Kanoichis will set him straight. Tsunade explained. But. No more but Shizun. Tsunade exclaimed. I have made my choice. If all else fails you can always tell the other girls that I placed him there so he can do repairs for the inn, as well as handle your pervert problem. Tsunade explained more calmly. It's not that I doubt your judgment Tsunade-sama. 
It's just that I don't think the other girls will be as accepting and understanding as I am about this. Shizun replied back solemnly. I know Shizun. I know. We just better hope he doesn't do anything stupid beforehand. Sunade replied as she began massaging her forehead to try and stop her incoming headache. Naruto knocked at the door several times and waited for someone to answer. Unbeknownst to him that the residents are all too absorbed with themselves that no one heard him. Most of the residents were on the second or third floor of the inn. Sakura was studying her medical books, Tamari was busy cleaning her fan in her room, Ino was outside at the backyard attending the garden with Tenten, and Anko was in her room listening to her iPod, and was dancing around to some dance music. Hinata and Kurinai went out to buy some groceries. Naruto had been standing outside for 10 minutes now. He decided to knock again. This time it was a little harder. He had only tapped once when the door opened slightly. Naruto took this as an indication to let himself in. He carefully entered the inn. He looked around to see if anyone was in. Hello, anyone here? He called out carefully. Again no response. Great. This is just great. No one is even here. He said to himself. He decided to search the inn for anyone he can talk to about his predicament. While he wandered around the ground floor, he noticed that everything was clean and orderly. He also noticed a couple of repairs that the inn needed to be done, such as the roof tiles while he was outside waiting for someone to open the door for him. He also found that the inn had its very own outdoor hot spring. Feeling tired from his journey back to Kanoha, he found the hot spring inviting. And since no one was around, he thought there wasn't really any harm in having a quick dip to soothe his tired and aching muscles. With all that in mind, he made his decision and began to undress. Sakura stretched from her seat. Her mind swam with various information that she recently acquired from the book she was reading. Feeling that a break was in order, she decided to make her way towards the hot spring. There's nothing like a hot spring to ease my tired body. Sakura told herself. As she gathered her bathing needs. Naruto enjoyed the sensation of warm water as it soothes his aching body. He never seemed to enjoy his stay at the hot spring houses that he went to with Jiraiya because of his stupid data gathering for his perverted book. It always got them chased by hordes of angry women. This was really the only time he can actually remember enjoying the spring for once. The whole area was surrounded by steam and the sound of water running was making his body relax and making him feel drowsy. That is until he heard the door to the spring slide open. He instantly froze when he realized he was no longer alone. Sakura entered the hot spring, clad with only a towel covering her body. She closed her eyes as she sat down in the springs and relaxed as she let the water do its work. It was then that she sensed someone else was in the spring with her and she opened her eyes and tried to make out who it was in the springs with her through the cloud of steam. She spotted blonde unruly hair and assumed that it was probably the sand kanoichi. She scooted closer to her when she noticed the figure moved away. The figure was now slightly a few meters in front of her on the other side of the spring. I'm sorry Tamari-san. I didn't mean to intrude but I only came here to relax. Sakura apologized through the thick steam screen between them. She didn't really mean to disturb the sand kanoichi. Tamari mostly kept to herself and really disliked being disturbed. Despite living in the same inn, Sakura hadn't really made any attempts to befriend the other kanoichi. The figure didn't reply back. Oh come on now Tamari. No need to be shy. We're both girls here. Why don't you come over here and talk to me? Sakura asked. Again there was no reply. Fine Tamari. Be bitch. See if I care. Sakura replied back. Annoyed at the sand kanoichi. Who's being a bitch? Tamari asked from the door, about to join her in the spring. She too was only wearing a towel. Tamari. Sakura asked, as she looked at the door, and the figure sitting across her. Yeah. Who else is it meant to be? Tamari replied back, as she approached Sakura. She also noticed another person at the spring which made her narrow her eyes. Due to the steam it was hard to distinguish who the figure was, but judging from the shape alone told her that it was more likely an intruder rather than any of the residents of the inn. If you're there, then who's there? Sakura asked, as she pointed to the unknown figure before her. Let's find out shall we? Tamari replied back before she swiftly went back inside the house to grab her battle fan. Erk. Naruto gulped as he began to try and escape. He was busted. Oh no you don't. Sakura replied back before tackling the unknown figure. Making them crash into the warm water. Tamari then enters, this time with her battle fan in her hand. She didn't have any time to put any of her clothes on, so she was still wearing a white towel around her body. Kamitachi no Jutsu. Tamari called out as she unleashed her wind attack. Effectively blowing off the steam surrounding the springs to better identify the intruder who was in the springs with Sakura. She watched as she saw her fellow Kanoichi rise from the water, her towel loosening. In the water was a slightly dazed male with blonde hair. Sakura also seems to notice this. Without the steam they can clearly identify that there was indeed a male inside the Kanoichi inn. In the spring, as a matter of fact. Pervert. The two Kanoichi both cried in unison. 
Naruto sensing the kind of danger he was now in, decided it was better to explain himself. Now wait a second. Let me explain. Naruto pleaded. Unfortunately for Naruto, Sakura's trench, loosened towel decided to give way. Slipping off from the pink-haired Kanoichi's body. Giving Naruto a knife full of her chest. Pervert. Sakura cried out, as she tried to cover herself with her left hand, while she administered a powerful right hack towards Naruto's slack jaw. Sending him hurtling a few feet away finally coming into a stop when he collided directly at one of the rocks surrounding the spring. Sakura then took this time to grab her towel to secure it around her. Naruto shook his head trying to clear his vision, and saw the two angry Kanoichi head towards him. Now was the time to really start running away. Ignoring the pain he felt, he pushed himself off the rock, and ran trying to explain himself, but failed, and only rewarded him with a powerful punch from the pink-haired girl. The blonde girl didn't look like she would listen to him, judging from the way she held that massive fan of hers. He'd hate to see what the blonde could do to him. Get back here. Both Tamari and Sakura called out, as they both chased the blonde youth. Naruto continued to dodge Tamari's wind attacks, while also trying to avoid Sakura's furniture projectiles, as he ran all over the house. He really didn't want to hurt the two girls. He decided to try and create cage bunchins, but his clones were eliminated by Tamari's and Sakura's attack, even before the clones were able to leave his side. He needed to think fast. By then this alerted the attention of a certain special jamin. Hearing the noises, she went outside of her room to investigate, only to catch a fleeting sight of a well-built blonde male, who was only wearing a towel followed closely by Sakura and Tamari. Seeing all this made her lick her lips with excitement, as she went inside a room and got her. She decided to join the foray. After all, it's been a while since she had gone hunting, and the blonde male seemed like the perfect prey. Naruto decided to jump up the roof to give him more room, so he can create more of his bunchins. The three Kanoichis followed closely behind. Meanwhile, Kuranai and Hinata had just arrived at the inn. They were both surprised by the amount of damage they saw as they entered. They also heard all the commotion coming from the outside towards the backyard. Without any hesitation, the two females went out to investigate. They ran upstairs towards the veranda to better distinguish what was going on in the inn. The cage bunchins were working, but not as good as Naruto hoped. It did somewhat slow the Kanoichis down a bit, but they were still chasing him relentlessly. He particularly got nervous when one kunai flew past his cheek and grazed it. Enko smirked when one of her finally managed to scratch the blonde. It only got her all excited at catching him. Tamari kept using her wind attacks on him, destroying most of the bunchins he had created. It also sent Naruto flying. Naruto decided that running away towards the Hokage office would be a better idea. If they followed him there, he was sure that Tsunade would put a stop to their attacks. With that in mind, he began to run towards the veranda. Not knowing that Hinata and Kuranai were just coming out to see what the commotion was about. Naruto landed in front of the two females. Hinata was startled while Kuranai was caught in surprise. Too stunned to move or react. Before them was a half-naked blonde with blue eyes and strange whisker marks on his cheeks. Kuranai narrowed her eyes and got ready to attack, but Tamari beat her to it. Seeing the blonde intruder had stopped running away she again used her Kamitachi no Jutsu. It worked because it sent Naruto hurtling towards the ground below, but he was not alone. Hinata also got caught in the attack and sent her down with him. Naruto saw Hinata fall and decided to protect her. So without thinking, he reached for her and hugged her. This action flustered Hinata. Naruto on the other hand shifted his body so that it was he who would bear the brunt of the impact. They landed painfully on the ground below. Actually it was Naruto who landed painfully on his back while he cushioned Hinata's fall. Naruto's body flared with pain. Hinata, realizing this, quickly got off him. Are you okay? Naruto asked the frightened girl. Ignoring his own pain for the moment. He's worried about me. He saved me from a nasty fall, and he doesn't even know who I am. Hinata thought to herself. She looked at her blonde savior, and couldn't help but feel a sudden sense of. Before Hinata could even ask the blonde if he was alright. He stumbled back on his feet, and began to run away. Kayubi has already begun healing his injured body. But Naruto could still feel the pain reverberating in his body, as he took flight. Hinata. Are you okay? Ino shouted, as she ran towards her. Beside her was Tenten. Who witnessed what had just happened. Both girls were surprised when they saw Hinata and the intruder fall from the third floor of the inn. They had heard the commotion as well and decided to investigate. Did that pervert try anything on you? Tenten asked angrily, brandishing her own set off from her weapon holster. Quickly girls, he's getting away. Kuranai told them as she, Tamari, Anko, and Sakura landed beside them. Hinata, you better stay back. Sakura you stay back as well and tend to her injuries. We'll handle that little pervert. Kuranai said, as she took charge of the group, before leading the rest of the household to catch the blonde intruder. Kuranai said, wait. Hinata cried out, as she watched her mentor lead the other girls to chase her savior. It's okay Hinata. They'll catch that lech. Sakura comforted the other girl. No? 
You don't understand. He saved me. Hinata replied back before getting up and following the other girls. Hinata wait. Sakura called out. She hasn't even checked her out for any injuries from the fall. It's that stupid lech's fault. Sakura thought to herself as she also got up and ran after the rest of the Kanoichi residents. I can't believe you're running away from a bunch of girls kid. Kayubi taunted him in his mind. Shut up Kayubi. I really don't need your two cents right now. Naruto growled to himself. Want me to take care of them? Kayubi asked. Naruto saw the maniacal grin the fox demon had. No. I can perfectly handle things on my own. Just lend me your strength for now. Naruto replied back. He can only guess it will involve something perverted. Jiraiya had really rubbed off on the fox demon. It was then that Naruto saw his savior. Naruto. With the Shizunas, bewildered, as he saw the blonde shinobi wearing just a towel streaking towards her. Nichin. Save me. Naruto called out to Shizun as he hid behind her. There he is. Called out Kurunai. The other girls are still hot in pursuit. Shizun soon saw the angry residents of the Kanoichi Inn and nervously sweat dropped. Feeling very uncomfortable being caught in the middle of chaos. Great Shizun you caught him. Now hand him over so we can deal with him. Anko replied back before licking her kunai while keeping her eyes glued on Naruto. Nichan Naruto pleaded from behind her. Shizun sighed. She felt sorry for the blonde shinobi. Not even a day back and he's already caught in the middle of trouble. She faced the other Kanoichi residents and shook her head. I don't think so, Anko. Shizun replied back as she stood defiantly in front of them. Trying to hide Naruto from their view. Step out of the way, Shizun said. He is a pervert. He took advantage of Hinata-sen. Tenten explained as she glared at the blonde. The rest of the girls nodded. He also saw me and Tamari naked at the hot springs. Sakura seconded. Saw me in my naked glory. Inner Sakura protested. Kill him. Skin him alive. Kill the pervert. Inner Sakura ranted. Shizun turned to face Naruto. Is this true? She asked him. No. They walked in on me while I was in the spring. Naruto explained. Looking Shizun straight in her eyes to tell her that he was not lying. His blue eyes almost mesmerized her to believe him. Liar. Shouted the rest of the girls as they began to advance towards Shizun. Trying to get a hold of Naruto. Shut up all of you. Shizun replied back effectively stopping their advance. Why don't we all step back inside and get these things sorted out alright? She pleaded to the girls. All the girls reluctantly agreed but glared at the blonde male. All except for Hinata who was torn between being thankful for being saved by him and supporting her roommates. Inside Naruto explained his side of the story of what happened when he arrived at the Kanoichi Inn. The girls felt sheepish at the way they reacted towards him and reluctantly apologized. Still one question still bothered them. If it was all an accident then why are you here? Didn't you know this was a Kanoichi Inn? Hino asked Naruto. I knew this was a Kanoichi Inn, but Naruto replied back, but before he could explain, Sakura interrupted him. So you are a pervert? Sakura accused. Which once again fueled the anger of the rest of the residents towards him. All except for Hinata and Shizun. What Naruto is meant to say is that he is staying here. Shizun explained to them. Glaring slightly at Sakura for jumping to conclusions again. Setting off the ire of the other residents when the situation was already diffused. What? The residents all shouted in shock. But he's a guy. Tenten shouted. This is a Kanoichi Inn. Hino stated. He's a pervert. Sakura protested. Think about the girl's purity. Kurunai exclaimed. The girls said all at the same time. What a hunk. Anko gushed. All the other girls looked at her weirdly. What? He is. Anko replied back to them as she winked at Naruto. Naruto on the other hand began to cringe. He just recognized who the craze was. She was the demented examiner for the Chunin exams. The one that caught him with her kunai and licked his blood. He didn't like the gleam that he saw in her eyes or the way she eyed him like a piece of meat. Seeing his reaction however only made Anko's grin grow whiter. Shizun sighed again. This is Uzumaki Naruto. He is also the new manager of the inn that Tsunade has chosen. She explained as the other girls all stared at her and Naruto in shock. Naruto on the other hand just scratched the back of his head. Hi girls. Sorry about this. Naruto apologized as he grinned sheepishly as he stood up from his seat. Shizun sighed again. This is Uzumaki Naruto. He is also the new manager of the inn that Tsunade has chosen. She explained as the other girls all stared at her and Naruto in shock. Naruto on the other hand just scratched the back of his head. Hi girls. Sorry about this. Naruto apologized as he grinned sheepishly. All the girls stared in shock. All of them speechless. Well I'm not going to stand for this. Kurunai protested as she stood up. There are girls in this inn that will be in danger of him. Think of their virtues. Kurunai said in a panic. The inn does not need a hormone crazed guy running the place. Who knows what type of sick, twisted, and perverted things the blonde was planning for them. Especially the younger girls. His reputation remains questionable. I mean, who the hell is he? 
We don't know anything about this guy, and Tsunade appoints him as the manager. Kuro and I rambled on. While Kuro and I rambled on, and on about the inappropriateness of Naruto's presence in the inn, and her concern towards their welfare, the rest of the household began to remember one Uzumaki Naruto. He's a member of Team 7. Sakura thought to herself, as she looked at the blonde-haired boy more curiously. Finally recognizing him. Shocked that after three years she barely remembered the blonde teammate that constantly bugged her about going out with him. He had changed a lot it seems. He was no longer the midget blonde that bugged her. Rather he was now taller. Taller than the women present. He was probably as tall as Hata Kakashi. He was built too. Judging by his bare chest, muscular arms, and thick legs. Inner Sakura drooled as she observed him secretly. Fighting the urge to blush and drool at the same time. Trying to drown out Inner Sakura's protest of trying to peek and examine what lies behind that small towel wrapped tightly around his waist. He was the one that defeated Kiba and encouraged me during my fight with Niji. Hinata gasped. No one had ever supported her before. She also remembered how much she felt for him. She had admired him for standing up for her. Her admiration slowly turned into something more when she found out from Kiba that he fought Niji in her honor during the Chunin preliminaries where she lost consciousness. It was just like a fairy tale story. That is until her eyes began to wonder about his almost naked state. She had to fight the urge to use her Byakugan to examine him more thoroughly. Add Hinata. Naughty Hinata Hinata mentally berated herself. Trying to maintain her eye level to remain on his handsome, but clueless face. He is the one that defeated Niji's family technique. Tenten gasped, as well in recognition. He was the one who completely changed Niji's attitude completely. He used to treat Hinata no better than dirt, but after his encounter with the blonde, he became less cold-hearted. He actually managed to tolerate the Hyuga clan, and became an older brother figure for Hinata and Hinabi. Naruto managed that with just one single encounter. Though another thought entered her mind. I wonder if he realizes that he's standing in front of us with just a towel on Tenten asked herself, as she tried not to giggle at his clueless expression, as to why Kurenai was so adamant of his presence. And boy what a presence it was. He made it to the preliminaries, and defeated Hyuga Niji. One of Kanoha's genius shinobi. You know remembered. She also couldn't help but smile at his antics when he won. He didn't brag about his own or sneered at Niji. Instead he tricks his around like a kid. Lapping up all the attention that was given to him. He also managed to befriend Shikamaru and Choji in the process. She tried to avert her eyes in examining him more, since it will only make her notice more of his tanned and well-toned body. She focused her sight on his blue eyes instead. Marveling at how mesmerizing those eyes could be. Tamari shivered in fear. He was the one who defeated Gar in his ultimate demon form. Tamari had nightmares about that fateful day. The first time Gaara transformed made her fear for her life. That in any given moment, Gaara will be completely consumed by bloodlust, and actually kill her, and Kankuro in rage. So it was only natural that when Gaara transformed during his encounter with Naruto, that such fear enveloped her whole being. But what was more terrifying was the fact that someone, as dangerous and fearsome as Gaara in his ultimate form, another being had managed to defeat him. That being was now in front of her. What terrifying power could be lurking underneath such a facade of an innocent smile? Tamari involuntarily shivered. Not wanting to find out if Naruto could be more frightening than Gar, as she recalled their fight at the force. He's the annoying brat that I caught during the Chunin exams. Enko stated. Such sweet blood too. She grinned wickedly. He was loud and rash. But there was something about the blonde that piqued her interest, and it wasn't because he was a demon container. There was something more intangible that attracted her. It must be the raw power he unconsciously emits, or it must be his innocence that draws her like a moth to a flame. In any case, Anko was definitely interested. Shizun watched each of the residents' reactions upon finding out about Naruto's identity. She can tell from their reactions that from one stage or another, they have encountered the loud mouth shinobi. Well it was hard not to. Still Shizun didn't know whether this was a good thing or bad thing. You only get two reactions when you meet Naruto. It's either you like him or you don't. Naruto is part of Team 7 under the leadership of Hata Kakashi. From the age 6, he was adopted by one of the Sanins known as Jiraiya, and was trained by him from time to time, that's why he was barely around. Shizun explained watching the resident's reaction. More precisely, Kurenai and Anko's reactions about this little information. Upon hearing this, the younger girls gasped in awe while Kurenai and Anko knew more to Jiraiya than everyone else, and had a different kind of reaction. Having endured the perverts' many attempts of peeping at them at the bath, it suffices to say that both women were left unimpressed. Well, slightly unimpressed. In Anko's case, it only made her interest in the blonde-haired boy grow. The rest of the girls who didn't know Jiraiya's perverted reputation was odd that Naruto was being trained by one of the legendary Sanins. I know many of you hold reservations against him, but please give him a chance. He is a great guy once you get to know him. Shizun pleaded to the girls. More to Kuranai than anyone else, since she looked like she was the one who is still against the idea of letting Naruto stay. 
Naruto blushed as Shizun's praise of him. He had never had anyone support and stand up for him before. He looked at her in awe. He made a mental promise to himself that he will make it in his own power to never disappoint her. The rest of the residents contemplated Shizun's words. Surely if Shizun trusted the blonde-haired boy, they could find it in themselves to trust him too. Besides, he looks like a decent guy. Very well. He can stay. But you better keep your hands to yourself or else. Kuro and I warned Naruto. She was still not convinced of the guy's identity to trust him entirely. Besides, he was just standing there. Barely clothed in front of them with not a sense of modesty whatsoever. No decency at all to at least put a shirt on and not let the rest of the residents bask on his well-toned, tanned, and delicious body. Kuranai bit her tongue, trying to dissuade herself of her last wondering thoughts. The rest of the girls just followed suit. They simply nodded their heads indicating they felt the same way as Kuranai. Great. Shizun clapped her hands in appreciation. She had at least convinced the residents to let Naruto stay. Now for the hard part. Would you like to introduce yourselves? Shizun asked the people. Naruto took the initiative. Well since I'm the odd one out. I guess I'd better introduce myself. He said a bit sheepishly. I'm Izumaki Naruto, age 18. I like ramen and training. My greatest dream is to become Hokage so I can protect my most precious people. He introduced himself and looked at Shizun. Clearly indicating that she was one of his most precious people. Which made Shizun blush. My turn. Anko replied back excitedly. Watching Naruto's interaction with the medic nin, she assumed that he was most definitely attracted to more mature women. That, and she was eager to get his attention. Mirashi Anko is my name, and killing is my game. She introduced herself while winking at Naruto. Naruto shivered in response to the attention the psychotic Jounin was giving him. I am also a Takubetsu Jounin. She added, as she saw him look at her in interest. So she's a highly specialized Jounin. I wonder what type of training she specializes in. Maybe she can help me train. Naruto thought. But when he took another glance at Anko, he began to have second thoughts. Especially when he saw that wicked gleam in her eyes. Her and I only sighed watching her best friend's antics. She decided to introduce herself. My name is Yuhi Kurunai. I am a Jounin. She answered. She had no plans on revealing her specialty and techniques to the blonde until she deemed him trustworthy enough. I am also teammate sensei. My name is Hayuga Hinata. I am part of teammate. I am a Chunin. Hinata introduced herself shyly. She fought her blush from showing as she felt the blonde's blue eyes on her. Tenten and I are weapon specialists. I am a member of Team Guy, and I am also a Chunin. Tenten responded by picking up where Hinata had trailed off. Yamanaka Ino is my name. I am also a Chunin, and enjoy flowers and gardening. Ino replied. Not wanting to reveal her bloodline limit. She plans on using them later on to find out more information about him. I'm Horino Sakura in case you have forgotten. We were on the same team before. Sakura stated, as he looked at Naruto to see if he remembered her. Naruto gave her a thumbs up, which clearly means he has so she continued. I am also a Chunin and Sunade Sama protege, which makes me a medic nin. I work alongside Shizun Sama. It's great to see you again, Naruto. Sakura finished as she smiled at him. The name is Sabaku Tamari. I am a Jounin, and Tamari began, but was suddenly cut off by Naruto. Sabaku, are you related to Gar by any chance? Naruto asked curiously. Yeah, I am his sister. We've met before during the Chunin exams. Tamari replied back, slightly nervous. He might still have a grudge against Sand for the whole invasion thing. Naruto seemed to think about it for a while trying to remember his encounter with Tamari. Before slamming his fist into his open palm. That's right. You were that hot Kanoichi Sheik from Sand. Naruto blurted out. Which made Tamari blush. Thanks I think. Tamari replied back. She could feel the rest of the household's eyes on her. Hey. How come you're a Kanoha? Aren't you meant to be a Sand? You weren't a Sand last year when I caught up with Gar. Naruto asked her. Not noticing how uncomfortable Tamari was being the center of attention. I am Sand and Leaf's ambassador. As such I can stay here to monitor Sand and Leaf's relations and maintain peace between the villages. Tamari answered for him. She tried not to feel self-conscious since it wasn't in her nature to be one. But there was something in the way he looked at her with those blue innocent eyes of his that made her feel funny. Gar did say he has a sister. Never knew you were this hot though. Naruto blurted out again. This comment only made Tamari blush more and glare at him for making her do so. Kurunai was also glaring at Naruto for openly flirting with the sand Jounin in front of everyone. Hinata felt a tad jealous that Naruto seemed to be more interested with Tamari. It was the same deal with Tenten and Ino, but for completely different reasons. Tenten was glaring at Naruto for not picking up on Hinata's feelings and had been blatantly flirting with Shizun and Tamari. Ino on the other hand was a bit ticked off that Tamari was getting the blonde's attention. Ino was still sore about Tamari dating Shikamaru, who was also her crush at the time. 
Though they didn't last long, and she had gotten over Shikamaru, she felt a bit intimidated by the other blonde. She viewed Tamari as one of her rivals. She was determined to beat her in every possible way she could. After all, didn't they say healthy competition is good for the soul or something like that? Making you strive, and work harder just to see that person beaten by yourself. Not literally of course. Because she has a feeling that Tamari can easily do that without even trying. Sakura was never her competition. Sakura was her best friend. As such she wanted her shy friend to be more confident about her talents. So she decided to push her. Made Sakura believe she was her rival so that in doing so she'd come out of her shell. And it worked to a certain extent. It brought her out of her shell, and became more outspoken, and confident about herself, but not without a downside. It cost her her friendship. And while she is still friends with the pink-haired Kanoichi, she still wished for the closeness they had when they were kids. Their friendship was now built on insults, and comfort concealed in heavy sarcasm. Trust was still an issue that was on shaky ground. Not much of a friendship if you really look at it, but that's the next step or close enough to be one. Naruto looked around the room, and noticed a lot of tension in the air. He assumed that he did something foolish again, and hoped that the girls didn't change their minds about letting him stay. Let me show you where your room is in Naruto, and after that I'll give you a tour of the place. Shizun offered. Not wanting to tempt fate again, and leave the other residents to simmer for a little while. Not really sure why there was a lot of tension in the air again, but she'd rather Naruto not be in the middle of it all. I've already had a brief tour of the place. Naruto replied back, as a joke to lighten the mood because it was true. Being chased by a pack of angry females gave him an unofficial tour of the whole inn, trying to get away from them. Unfortunately it didn't go over too well to the other residents. The joke only served as a reminder of what had happened earlier. But then again, getting a better look at the place with a leisurely pace sounds much better. Naruto replied again. Watching the other girls glare at him, while he laughed uneasily while he scratched the back of his head. Naruto took a good look around his room. It was spartan at the most. It had a bed, a table, and a few chairs, and a wardrobe for his clothes. Shizun said that the room was only simple, but he was free to decorate, and add more furniture to the room. Which was fine by him. With his many missions, he had a lot of money to spend. Money that he manages to hide from his perverted sensei. Upon thinking about his mentor, he remembered a package Shizun gave him. It was supposed to be from his mentor. Since he wasn't really doing anything, and he had already unpacked, he decided to read the letter attached to the package. Naruto. Sorry brat, but I was sent to another mission by Tsunade. No you can't come. And? No? You're not going to follow me. Don't try to track me down. You have a responsibility to take care of. Think of it as handling a mini version of Kanoha. This will be a great practice into becoming a Hokage. Trying to manage the residents of the inn, their needs, and handling paperwork. Oh, and do follow the advice that I've been giving you all these years. This will also give you an opportunity to try and test your manly skills. Don't fret if you've forgotten. I've given you all that you need to know about women in the package. Signed exclusively by myself so don't lose it. Make me proud Brad. Jiraiya. Naruto merely groaned in response, until he noticed that there was something more. P.S. Whenever you can, take a photo of the girls for me to keep me warm in the cold lonely nights. It would also help if you send me their vital statistics. Upon reading the last note, Naruto angrily rolled the letter into a tight little ball, and threw it into a stebiscuit. Seething at his mentor's request. He was trying to stay alive, as much as possible, not risk an early grave. Does he not understand what kind of danger his life is in just by merely breathing in the same place, as the residents of the Kanoichi Inn? Naruto looked at the package like it was supposed to come to life, and bit him in the ass. Naruto sighed, and decided to get this over, and done with. He opened the package, and stared at the contents. He wasn't sure whether to scream from frustration or an indignant anger or perhaps laugh hysterically. He had to hand it to his mentor though. He still manages to make his life miserable whether he is near or not. He stared at the package in his hands. It was Yurei Azichu Ichi Paradise. The full limited collection. It was also the one with the hardback cover, as well as pictures and illustrations. There were the rare limited collection edition. If Hata Kakashi found out he had these, he would die in envy, and would most likely sell him his Sharingan eye, and his mother to have it. Naruto immediately made a face picturing what kind of mother the Jounin had, whether she too wore a mask, and shook his head. Naruto even briefly considered the benefits of having his very own Sharingan. He considered offering the book collection to Kakashi for it. He shook his head. Having blue eyes that turn red out of his own will is cool enough. Besides, he doesn't want to steal other people's techniques. He'd rather create one on his own or learn them. But it still would have been cool though. He was interrupted from his thoughts by a gentle rapping upon his door. Naruto Kun are you ready? I'll give you a tour of the inn now, as well as a rundown of the inn's rules and regulations. Shizun said outside his door. Naruto absentmindedly placed the collection series on top of his dresser, and joined Shizun for the tour. Later that night Naruto decided that he wanted to have another go at the hot spring. 
everyone else seemed to have gone to bed anyway. He had decided to remain silent and move out of the residence way for the rest of the day, since every time he was in the immediate vicinity, he felt a tension in the air. He was stressed out and really needed to relax. Tomorrow he will work on his people's skills and try to get to know each of the girls better and try to get along with them, but for now he needs to relax. He made sure that he was silent as he made his way down towards the onsen, hot springs. Careful not to alert or disturb any of the resting girls. He finally made it to the steam-covered onsen and relaxed into the warm water. The sky was clear and the stars were out. He spent the time just losing himself to the sensations of the water, relaxing his tight muscles as he watched the stars above. This is life. He said no one but himself. I'll say. Said a sultry purr. Naruto snapped awake. Who's there? All the while thinking that the inn better not be haunted. No need to be frightened, Naruto-chan. Just relax. Said the sultry voice. Come out. Whoever you are. Naruto called out. Ready to engage the stranger in battle. If you insist. The voice replied. Naruto squinted his eyes and saw that the stranger was Mirashienko. The steam was making it hard for him to see her form, but at least he could see her face. What are you doing here? Naruto asked. Relaxing somewhat. Taking a much needed bath. I don't like to share with the other girls. Enko replied back as she subtly moved closer. It was then that Naruto realized one important detail, as the steam in the onsen thinned, and the light provided by the heavens made him aware of a single and most important fact. Mirashi Enko was naked. Standing in front of him with a naughty look in her eyes and smirk on her beautiful face. Gah! Naruto uttered in shock. What? You don't like what you see? Enko teased as she watched him avert his eyes, covering them with his hands. It looks like you do. Since your little shinobi seems happy to see me. Enko continued as she moved gracefully around the water as she approached him. He had definitely gone taller and more built as her eyes roamed his body, licking her lips, liking what she was seeing. Now she could only remove that pesky towel. Naruto removed his hands from his eyes and put them to cover the staining reaction in between his legs. Unaware that Enko was now circling him like a hungry shark. Don't worry Naruto I won't bite hard Enko whispered. She was close. Too close in fact because he could feel her breath in his ear. He could also feel her body heat against his skin. Naruto jumped in surprise and fell into the water. The commotion and the loud splash didn't go unheard though. Because in mere seconds he could hear the other residents running towards the onsen. To make matters worse, Enko tried to help him out, trying to assist him to get up on his feet, but tripped in the process. Landing on top of him. Well this is interesting. Enko purred as she snuggled against him. Not planning to move anytime soon. Naruto had to fight back Eki thoughts that entered his mind, and Kayubi screamed at him to take her. I'll say. Came an angered response from a feminine voice. Naruto and Enko looked towards the entrance of the onsen, and found shocked, horrified, and angry eyes all directed at them. I slipped. Naruto offered, but didn't look convincing since Anko was still lying on top of him. In her birthday suit. Pervert. The rest of the girls replied back while Anko stepped back and watched the carnage unfold. She really didn't want to be at the receiving end of the residence wrath. And I was this close to Anko's side in disappointment as Naruto screamed in pain. Shizune on the other hand rushed towards them in an attempt to stop them from committing murder. Glaring at Anko and subtly ordering her with her eyes to help her. Enko just gave a nonchalant shrug and tried to hold back a seething kurinai from trying to dismember the blonde manager. Waking up for Naruto wasn't much of a painful ordeal. It was remembering what happened before and the thought of future pain is what kept him in bed. Get up kid. I refuse to lend you my powers only to be trampled by a pack of vixens. Kayubi commanded him. It was rather a humiliating display. Kayubi was a powerful demon, stuck in an 18 year old boy who doesn't even know how to put women in their place. His power alone should have dictated respect and fear. Yet his vessel takes the abuse, as if it was nothing. It was something Kayubi had frequently berated him on. He was powerful. He demands respect. Now if you only let me handle things that'll all be at your feet, waiting for your hand and foot. Catering your every whim. Kayubi added. Naruto just groaned and tried his hardest to drown out Kayubi's voice. He already knew how Kayubi would have handled the situation. Various eki and hentai images and scenes flashed through his mind. Showing him exactly what would have happened if he let go, and let his more base, and animalistic instincts take over. Damn it. Naruto screamed in frustration. He thought he'd be able to have a break from all the pervertedness his mentor had tried teaching him, and continually try, and influence him with. He didn't realize that the demon he was carrying was that frustrated. I don't really need this right now Kayubi. So just shut the hell up. Naruto berated Kayubi. Naruto understood that Kayubi must be feeling rather pissed off at how he handled the situation. He was a demon king. Because of this, Kayubi expected Naruto to act like one, since it was he who has the demon. Just like Shikaku's vessel, who struck fear upon mentioning his very name. 
Gara of the desert. People quivered in fear just from hearing the vessel's name. Now Gara would have been the perfect vessel. He didn't take any crap from anyone. Worthy to be a vessel for any demon. And this was just a one-tailed demon inferior, compared to the nine-tailed fox. It must have been such an ego blow to the demon. Don't compare me to that one-tailed weakling. Kayubi snarled. The difference between our levels is far too great. I refuse for you to think that that demon is any match for my powers. I only need to unleash half the power of one of my tails to defeat him. So don't you dare insult me. Naruto just chuckled at Kayubi's reaction. But you do have a point kid. I only want you to have the respect you deserve to be worthy of being my vessel. Kayubi replied. This is probably the only thing Naruto and Kayubi could agree on. Naruto couldn't handle the fact that no matter how much he tried, the village he tries so hard to protect continues to scorn him. He kept remembering times from his childhood. The many attempts on his life until the Sandane gave Jiraiya custody of him. He still had nightmares of how much pain and trauma the people gave him. He was mentally and emotionally scarred. Being with Jiraiya helped him cope and heal with the pain, stopping him from going on a murderous rampage and giving in to his bloodlust. Kayubi on the other hand admired Naruto's self-control. Despite his many encouragement of decimating the village, Naruto held back. Touching people and managing to reach out and change some of them. But it was only a matter of time until the whole village found out about him. The true test would be if his packer's so-called friends would be able to accept Naruto once they find out about the truth. Both his thoughts and Kayubi's were making Naruto depressed. Naruto didn't want to lose his precious people. He didn't have many. He already lost Sanding. The one great man that he had looked up to and had made him feel special. But he was glad that at least he still had a family he could turn to. There was Yumino Ruka, who acted like an older brother to him, Jiraiya who acted like his perverted uncle, and then there was Tsunade and Shizun. He smiled when he thought of all of them. He knew that his loud, brash, and disrespectful attitude annoys them, but somehow it was his only way to really show and test how much they really cared about him. He didn't want the common affection that he sees from the families that walk down the streets of Kanoha. Those types of affection can easily be copied and faked. But by pushing the buttons of the people he cares about and testing their limits, he was able to see how much they really care and try to understand him. He had a very difficult childhood, and he just wanted to be sure that the feelings they were showing for him were real, and not just a mere illusion or fear of the demon he was carrying. Do you think Tsunade's breasts are real or special Kayubi asked out of the blue, snapping Naruto from his thoughts. Bah. Naruto replied in shock, not even knowing what the hell prompted Kayubi to ask such a question. Come on kid, don't tell me you never wondered if they are. I mean I'm quite impressed that such a human can even perform so powerful. Naruto decided it was enough, and totally blocked Kayubi's voice. Prompting him to finally get up from his warm bed, and decided to see if he could make amends to the girls. Having decided to do just that, he got up, and headed to the bathroom. Thanking Shizun mentally for giving him a room with its very own bathroom. He quickly got dressed, and headed towards the kitchen where he found Hinata. Hinata had been awake bright and early. She enjoyed cooking, and loved to cook for the other girls. She mused slightly about the accident that happened last night, and shook her head. She couldn't believe how Anko could do such a thing with Naruto. Hinata blushed. Remembering Naruto wearing that tiny towel, and shaking her head. She didn't blame Naruto for what happened last night. She believed that what happened was not Naruto's fault. He didn't know about the older Jounin's habit of going to the onsen naked. She remembered joining the foray, and assisting Shizun and Anko in trying to stop the rest of the girls from beating him up. She blushed at remembering that at one point or another, she was able to brush against Naruto while fending off the other girls. Good morning Hinata-chan. Naruto greeted Hinata quite exuberantly, surprising the Hayuga girl. Naruto-kun. Hinata gasped from surprise. Ha? Huh? Sorry about that Hinata. Didn't mean to scare you like that. Naruto apologized sheepishly, as he scratched the back of his head. That's okay Naruto-kun. You just surprised me, that's all. Hinata replied back, fighting to keep herself from stuttering. She had gotten over that habit a long time ago with the help of the girls. She couldn't believe she was regressing back to her old self just by talking to him. What are you doing? Naruto asked. Curious, as to why Hinata was awake. I'm just cooking and preparing breakfast. Hinata replied back. She thanked herself mentally for being able to reply back without stuttering. Need any help? Naruto replied back enthusiastically. He can start making amends with her while helping her. Not really. Hinata replied back shyly. Uncertain of what to do next. Come on. I want to help you at least. Naruto pleaded using his puppy dog eyes. Sure. Hinata found herself responding almost automatically and hypnotically. Such beautiful blue eyes. Yash. Naruto cried out happily as he raised a fist in the air. What do you want me to do? You could help me by chopping some of the vegetables on the table. Yash. I can do that. I'll show you my marvelous chopping skills. Naruto replied back enthusiastically. Hinata blushed prettily. 
Soon both youths worked together quietly. Ahei Naruto Kan, Hinata. Shizun greeted as she entered the kitchen. A bit surprised that Naruto was in the kitchen helping Hinata cook. Good morning, Shizun san. Ahei Onichin. Shizun snickered. You two look so adorable together. She teased, watching Hinata blush while Naruto looked at her quizzically. Want me to set up the table? Shizun offered. Sure. Naruto replied before Hinata could respond. This will be the most kick ass breakfast you'll ever have. Naruto replied back as he helped Shizun gather the plates and eat utensils. Why is that? Shizun asked. She was glad that Naruto seemed to be in such a happy mood. She tried to look at him closely to see if it was just a mere facade. She had not seen Naruto for so long and she didn't want to see him upset. Because me and Hinata-chan made it. Naruto replied back with a grin. Hinata blushed at the compliment. So it's Hinata-chan now? Shizun teased. Ha. Huh? Naruto replied back confused. He was used to calling all the girls he met with Chan. It was something he had picked up from his mentor, not knowing the intimate implications it contains. Never mind. Shizun replied back. Glad that Naruto was immune from Jureya's perverted habits. It actually worried her that he might have been able to be influenced by his mentor, judging from the accident the night before. But she knew it was not his fault. All the girls knew of Anko's bathing ritual. She also knew of her more peculiar behaviors. She just hoped that they would not hold that little incident against him. Soon the rest of the girls joined them in the dining room. Breakfast was an unusually quiet event. Mostly because the girls contemplated what had happened the night before. Naruto being Naruto was not used to such peace, and thus decided to break it. Anoese Anoese, what do you girls think of breakfast? He exclaimed with such energy. A couple of the girls winced at the blonde male's exuberance. Not really used to dealing with such energy bursts and vibrancy during the morning. It was fine. Why do you ask? Ino replied back. Because I helped prepared. He said in the same loud happy voice. If the girls were shocked because of his little revelation, they didn't show it. Actually most of them were impressed, especially Sakura, for she was sure that the only thing the blonde ate revolved around instant ramen or something similar to the sort. Most of the girls were even impressed that Naruto would even step into a kitchen, which was clear to the male shinobi population that it was a woman's domain. To learn that he would actually remotely enjoy cooking at leisure was information that was quite amusing. Not many male shinobi will even admit to the act of cooking, since it was a feminine trait. But then again it must be some ploy of his to charm them. But it was Hinata-chan that did most of the work. Naruto continued, as he gave Hinata the thumbs up. The girls only giggled at the blushing Hayuga. Naruto, who now felt that the atmosphere had gone considerably lighter, decided to apologize for the incident the night before. Uh, I would also like to take this opportunity to apologize about last night, Naruto said while scratching the back of his head. I really didn't know that Anko-san would be there that late at night. The girls seemed to absorb his apology. Contemplating whether they should apologize, as well for overreacting. Naruto had recently arrived, and had no idea of their habits, especially Anko's. Naruto then looked towards Anko. Gomen Nasai. There's really no need to apologize to Naruto-chan. I really didn't mind you seeing me. In fact if ever you want any company at the onsen to wash your back just give me a call. Anko replied back, making the other girls gasp at her brazen offer. Naruto gulped loudly, not knowing how to respond to Anko's offer. Kayubi on the other hand was screaming for him to take it. Kurenai only shook her head, and felt guilty for trying to castrate the blonde male, when she should be setting her friend Anko straight. It's fine Naruto, you shouldn't really apologize. It should be the girls that should be apologizing, especially Anko. Shizun replied back, stressing the last part out, while glaring at Anko slightly. The girls all looked a bit sheepish at Shizun's statement. One by one, the girls apologized to Naruto, all except for Kurenai and Anko. I'm sorry Naruto. Next time I'll make sure that the other girls won't be interrupting us. Anko replied back seductively at the blonde. Not the slightest bit remorseful for what she did. Which earned her a slap at the back of her head from her friend Kurenai. THWACK. Hentai. Kurenai admonished her friend. Anko merely glared at her friend while she massaged the back of her head. With the apologies over and done with, the rest of the household resumed their daily task. Shizun went to the Hokage Tower along with Tamari, Sakura went to the hospital, and Ino went to the flower shop, while the rest of the girls stayed at the inn. Naruto, having nothing better to do, decided to at least begin his duties as a manager, and began to clean the floors, telling himself this would be a good training exercise for him. Half an hour later, Naruto wiped the sweat from his face. He had been on his knees, and had been furiously scrubbing the floors clean. He had done the first floor so far. There was still a matter of the second and third floor, not to mention the attic. He also wanted to check out the basement if it needs to be cleaned. He was surprised however when a shadow loomed over him. Naruto-chan. Can I have a moment of your time please? Anko asked him. Naruto was surprised that Anko was asking him for help. It was also rather unnerving since she actually looked decent and normal, with no mischief in her eyes. 
Shurenko-sen, what do you need? Naruto asked, as he stood up and began to dust off his pants and his hands. Benko absently bit her lower lip as she looked coyly at him, fighting the urge to reply back with exactly what she wanted to do with him, which involved a lot of the things mentioned in Jiraiya's books, but she restrained herself. She found out last night that the blonde was really shy and would probably be scared off by her being too forward. She would enjoy breaking his shy streak. She will take her time with him. It makes her fun more enjoyable that way. Naruto observed the psychotic Jounin closely. It never hurts to be too careful. She was acting weird from what he had known from her the other night. He was sure that Anko would probably be his mentor's perfect girl. Wild, crazy, and sexy. And most importantly perverted. To see her acting innocent bothered him. He also noted that she was wearing a purple kimono that was wrapped tightly around her body. I need you to come take a look at the shower. Anko replied back. Naruto nodded, asking Anko where the girls kept some tools. After Anko had shown Naruto where to fetch the tools, and after obtaining them, Naruto seemed to relax more. Naruto figured that the bathroom really needed to be fixed if Anko let him gather the tools. Okay sure. Lead the way then. Naruto replied back, as he followed Anko. Anko tried to hide the smile that wanted to escape her lips. Naruto had no idea what she planned for him. She began to lead the way, adding an extra sway in her hips. Naruto followed Anko to a room on the second floor. He was so intent on following Anko that he didn't notice that he had actually entered and walked past the bedroom. Anko on the other hand led him straight to the bathroom. Okay what seems to be the problem? Naruto asked as he studied the bathroom and took out a wrench, eager to get started. There seems to be a problem with the pipes. I haven't had any hot water in days. Anko explained. I feel so very dirty. She added with a sultry purr. Naruto almost dropped the wrench he was holding at the sudden change of her voice. He almost got whiplash from turning his head to face Anko. His blue eyes went white when he saw that the tight kimono she was wearing was now dangerously loose and was at risk of falling off. Enko grinned triumphantly as her eyes hungrily devoured his body. Naruto began to back out of the bathroom backwards. He stumbled and fell as he tripped on the way out. He looked at Enko in fear. Are you tired of Naruto? It's okay. You can take a look at the shower later. Why don't you lie down in bed and make yourself comfortable? Enko replied back, making Naruto realize that they were now in the bedroom. More precisely, him lying on the floor while in front of him stood Anko. Her arms on either side of the entry frame of the bathroom with her purple kimono barely secured around her body. Naruto's mind went into overdrive as he realized he had just walked into one of her traps. He was alone in Anko's room. With Anko practically prowling to get him to bed and ravage him. She advanced, savoring his deer caught on headlights look, turning her on even more. I like this fixin' kid. Show her what you're made of. Kayubi cheered Anko on. It's about time you've gotten yourself laid. Shut the hell up Kayubi. I'm going to get raped here. Don't you even care. Naruto reprimanded Kayubi. Just when Naruto thought that he was a goner. Anko's approach was interrupted by a knock from her door. Followed by Kurinai entering the room. Hey Anko, it's me Kurinai. I'm about to go down to the store. Need anything? She asked as she entered. Naruto quickly jumped to his feet and fought the urge to hug and kiss his savior. He instead rushed towards Kurinai and hid behind her. Curses. Anko spat. She was so close. Anko felt like crying at the moment. Naruto, what are you doing here in Anko's room? Kurinai asked as she looked at Naruto and then at Anko's state of dress or state of undress. Just trying to fix her pipes. Naruto quickly explained before snatching Kurinai's hand, eager to get away from the psychotic Jounin as fast as possible. I'll come with you to the market district to buy some replacement pipes for it. See you later Anko-san. Naruto replied back quickly before dragging Kurinai out of the room. Not caring if Anko even understood what he just said because of how fast he said it. Anko watched as the two departed. She was slightly disappointed that her fun was cut short again. Her frown was soon replaced by a smile, remembering that he will need to come back to her room in order to fix her so-called broken pipes. Naruto and Kurinai soon found themselves at the bottom of the steps of the Kanoichi Inn. Naruto out of breath while Kurinai glared at him, annoyed at being dragged all the way outside without any preamble. Care to explain to me why you're at Anko's room? Kurinai questioned Naruto, her hands across her chest, ready to give him another lecture about the inappropriateness of his presence in any of the girls' rooms. Naruto looked up from his bent position, trying to catch his breath. He was rather annoyed that he was always at fault. It wasn't his fault. Enko trapped him. He cringed at the thought of what might have been if Kurinai didn't barge him. Like I said, I came in there to fix her bathroom pipes. Apparently there's some problem with her hot water system. So I took a look, Naruto explained, trying to rein in his annoyance. He looked her in the eyes, daring her to say otherwise. Kurinai wanted to tell him that his answer was a lie. It wasn't a very convincing story. First of all she found them in the bedroom, with Anko's robe barely hanging off of her. 
That was all she needed to scold him. But looking at the challenge written in his sapphire eyes, she was forced to review the scene she had interrupted. Naruto was on the floor. He looked like a deer caught in the headlights, as he looked at Anko in fear. Anko had that mischievous gleam in her eyes. Kurenai was forced to have an internal debate. So far she has misjudged him twice. She has yet to apologize about the incident in the onsen. Knowing Anko, as long as she had meant that she knew Anko's personality and behavior quite well. It hadn't escaped her attention that Anko seemed to be really keen on the blonde. Deciding to figure out everything later, she decided to let go of the issue for now. She can talk to Anko later and get her to explain to her what happened. Kurenai sighed. Well since we're out here we might as well go to the market. Naruto seemed to accept her dismissal of the subject. To be honest, he really didn't want to think of what happened and what exactly the psychotic Jounin had planned for him. He cringed thinking what could have inspired such interest in himself. He really didn't want to deal with her anytime soon. Anusa I thought you and Hinata-chan had already gone to the market yesterday. Naruto asked. Curious as to why she needed to go to the market so soon. He distinctly remembers the girls explaining to Shizun what they were up to upon his arrival to the inn. Kurenai simply rubbed her forehead. Well because of your surprise appearance, most of the groceries got trampled on because of all the excitement going on. She explained. She really didn't want to remember what kind of mess that fell on the inn. She was however surprised that Naruto volunteered to clean everything up. Using his bunchins to help clean up the mess before the night was through. Thinking of all the work and chakra Naruto must have used to make up for the mess, made her feel guilty about almost castrating him in the onsen. The poor blonde probably wanted to relax his tired and aching muscles. The thought of his muscles made her think of his well-built and toned body. What was probably the most captivating thing about his beautiful body was not how built it was or how tanned and healthy he looked but at how smooth his skin looked. There was no sign of scars or blemish upon his golden skin. A feat too impossible to be achieved by any male shinobi. Upon reflecting on the youth's body, she found herself blushing at embarrassment, thinking such unclean thoughts. She made a mental note to try and limit her contact with a certain jounin. Somewhere in Enko's bedroom. Enko sneezed. She rubbed her nose vigorously. Perhaps waiting for Naruto in her bed in a provocative pose, with her clothes hanging off isn't such a good idea. She's either getting a call from the draft or someone was thinking of her. She grinned. She wished it was Naruto who was thinking of her. Omen Nasai. Naruto apologized. Feeling guilty. He can only guess how much food must have been wasted. If he was Akimichi Chaoji, he would have cried at the injustice of it all and seek vengeance on the perpetrators. Then he got a brilliant idea. Slapping his fist against his open palm. Surprising Kurunai. Wait right here. Naruto practically shouted at her as he rushed back up the endless stone steps and back in the inn. Ha. Huh. Was all Kurunai could say. Amazed at how fast Naruto disappeared. Upon reaching the inn's foyer, Naruto then used his body flicker technique to get to his room undetected. He really didn't want to be ambushed by Anko again. Reaching his room, he began to look through his pack, the dresser, and finally the closet. Scratching his head in annoyance. He still couldn't find it. Where is it? He asked no one, but himself. Trying to lower his voice down so as to not alert or disturb anyone else in the inn. Most especially Anko. Then an epiphany struck him. Slapping his face for being such a dolt. He lifted up the mattress and found what he was looking for. There you are, Gama-chan. Naruto purred at his green frog wallet. Hugging the frog purse in his face. Aerosenin will not bother you anymore I promise. Naruto cooed at the wallet. You've gotten quite big you know, but right now I need you to lose a bit of weight okay. Not bothering to change clothes since he didn't want to make Kurenai wait any longer than necessary, he simply put Gama-chan in the pocket of his cargo pants. Using his body flicker technique, he once again disappeared and reappeared right before the very surprised Yuhi Kurenai. To say that Kurenai was surprised was a bit of an understatement. She nearly screamed from being caught off guard. She was so intent on Naruto barging down through the stairs that she was unprepared for him appearing right in front of her. She was so surprised in fact that she took a step back and lost her footing. Naruto saw her fall. Acting on instincts, he wrapped one arm behind her back and the other on her waist to support her. They stood there frozen. Too shocked to move. A few passers-by looked at the two and shook their heads and continued walking. To them, the two looked like they were rehearsing some form of dance and the blonde had just tipped the woman as a finale. Although why they should be stuck in that form was a mystery. In any case from their attire and forehead protector, they had already guessed they were shinobi, and whatever they were doing was none of their business. Realizing the intimate manner he was holding Kurenai, he began to set her on her feet. She didn't look well enough to stand so he continued to hold her against him. Kurenai on the other hand was flustered. Never before had she been held so intimately and with so much care and concern. She became aware that she now stood on her two feet. A bit shaky at first, but noticed that he didn't remove his hand around her body. A part of her raged at being taken advantage of, but another part of her was thankful that he didn't let her fall. 
she was aware of his warmth radiating from his body. The subtle scent of his masculine body combined with his musky cologne was causing chaotic responses deep within herself. She was intimately too close. She was fighting the temptation of just letting her body simply melt against him. Kurunai-sensei. Naruto asked through her fogged mind, jolting her out of her dazed state. Kurunai looked up and nearly cursed. She forgot just how tall the youth has gotten. She looked up in his gorgeous sapphire eyes, and all of her senses seemed to have left her. Kurunai-sensei are you alright? Naruto asked in genuine concern. She seemed to just lean against his body for support. The shock he must have given her was far too much for her to handle. R. O. The course. Kurunai replied, as she quickly got a hold of herself. Embarrassed at how immature she must have looked. She had promised herself to look after the girls, and keep an eye on him. But it looks like she needs to keep an eye on herself as well. Judging from her earlier reaction. Are you sure? Naruto prodded. Still keeping a firm hold of her. Yes. I am fine. You can let go of me now. She replied back. A faint blush gracing her cheeks. Then, as though burned. Naruto quickly let her go, and took a few steps back. Omen Nasai. Naruto apologized profusely. Kurunai didn't know whether to be disappointed at how fast he let her go or the fact that he didn't even grope her while he was holding her. It's fine, Naruto. No harm done. Kurunai replied back. Why don't we just head to the market? Naruto only nodded in response. And without further preamble, the pair set off towards Kanoha's market district. Three hours later. Are you sure you bought enough? Yeah. It looked like you brought the whole store. It must be done besides, there's the residence needs to think about. You shouldn't have to go through all these troubles, you know. They can probably shop for their own. I know, but at least they won't have to worry about it later. This way, it will be much more convenient for them. You really amaze me, you know. Naruto suddenly blushed. Well that's why I'm here. To make sure that I meet all your needs. Naruto replied back. It's part of being a manager after all. That's easy for you to say. One of Naruto's bunchin responded. Yeah. Exclaimed a few other bunchins. You're not the one carrying the groceries. All of Naruto's bunchin grumbled. Shut the hell up all of you. Naruto shouted at his clones. Stupid, good-for-nothing pack of crybabies. Naruto muttered under his breath, making Kurunai giggle. Behind Naruto and Kurunai are five bunchin clones, all carrying heavy bags of groceries. Each clone carries at least four bags, one on each underarm and one on each hand. Boy, Naruto, why don't you create more bunchins? These bags ain't exactly lightweight you know. One of the bunchins complained. Naruto angrily turned around. Baka. If I created more clones then we won't be able to walk through the streets. The market is crowded enough, as it is. Who are you calling Baka? Baka. One of the bunch and grouses. Stop shouting. No. You stop shouting. Make me. Baka. Who are you calling Baka? Baka. Kur and I couldn't help but laugh. Naruto was arguing with himself. In public. Never thought I'd see the day you'd actually call yourself Baka. Baka. All of the bunch and ceased all arguments when they heard the voice sardonically interrupt them. All of them glared at him. Naruto on the other hand smirked. It's been a long time since the dog breathed. Then Izuka Kiba stepped into view. Yo Naruto. Great to see you again. Then nodded towards Kurunai. Sensei. Kurunai smiled at her ward. Kiba. To her surprise, Naruto gave her ward a hug. Which in turn, turned to a little rough housing. What was that for? Kiba groused, finally able to release himself from Naruto's headlock. That's for calling me Baka. Naruto smirked. When did you get back bro? Kiba asked. He had formed a friendship with the blonde during his short stay at Kanoha. Actually all of the rookie 9 and team guy. Just yesterday. Well shoot man. You should have sent a word or something. Kiba reprimanded the blonde. Have you caught up with the guys yet? No, not yet. Well listen up. Me and the guys will be meeting tonight at Asuma's hangout. You know the barbec place where he takes his team all the time. Come by man. Kiba invited. Sure why not. I'll see you guys there. Naruto replied back enthusiastically. Ha. Hey. You're still, as loud, as ever. Well I better go, and pick up Akimaru from the vet. See you Naruto. Sensei. Kiba replied back, as he bid his farewell. Naruto on the other hand was positively beaming. It truly was great to be back home. Kurunai watched the blonde in the corner of her eyes. Her heart nearly broke. He was happy. Truly happy. He did not wear his huge grin that he uses on everyone else. Instead it was just a simple smile. The curve on his lips. But his eyes were amazing. It was brighter than before. It's color richer. She had never seen this side of him. His aura was lighter too. She felt it. The happiness that he must be experiencing seeping through her skin. Surrounding her heart with warmth. She wanted nothing more but to see this side of him. She felt a small pang of disappointment of not knowing the blonde more. Perhaps she could help him. Like she helped Hayuga Hinata. The remainder of their shopping trip was quiet. 
Well as quiet as it can be between Naruto and Kuranai, but the Bunshins continued to gripe and whine about the amount of bags they carried. Even though there were now another three Bunshins added to the mix. Making a total of eight Bunshins. All in the same state as earlier. Kuranai didn't want to ruin the blonde's happy attitude. She didn't have to. After a few encounters with the other citizens, Naruto's happy cheer began to fade. Kuranai found it amazing how Naruto simply ignored the citizens' cheers and insults. Most of them she knew were spiteful and hurtful. She winced at some of the insults they threw at the blonde. But Naruto remained stoic. His face didn't show any emotion or expression. He ignored them. A few of them were even brave enough to throw rotten tomatoes at them. He simply ignored them. That is until one accidentally hit her. The look he gave them was the most frightening look she has ever seen. His blue eyes became violent red, as red chakra began to emanate from his body. The look froze everyone in the immediate area. The culprits responsible emptied their bladders prematurely from fear. The look in his eyes promised a slow and agonizing death. The killer intent he radiated rivaled the ones Kuranai had experienced from the Chunin exams long ago, when she watched the preliminaries fight between Sabakugar and Achiha Sasuke. Naruto. Kuranai found herself calling his name shakily. She watched him struggle to keep himself in control. He grinded his teeth. His fangs were visible. His whisker mark is more pronounced. Listen warm, and listen well. Naruto growled. His voice is deeper, and more menacing. I do not care what you do to me. I can easily let that slide. But don't you ever get innocent involved or so help me I will slash your worthless body, and choke you with your own insides, then hang you with it. Naruto then turned his attention towards the crowd dot that goes for the rest of you. If you all truly wish to test my patience, then so be it. I will enjoy bathing in your blood. Feasting on your dead, and worthless carcass. With those words, the crowd parted like the Red Sea, making way for him and his bunchins. Too terrified of him and what he could do, Kuranai quickly followed him. You shouldn't have let them get to you. Kuranai spoke up, breaking the uneasy silence. She knew that little stun he pulled would spread like wildfire. They got you, was all Naruto said, not bothering to turn around and speak to her. Kuranai rubbed her shoulder, the part where one of the wayward tomatoes hit her by accident. She watched him and noticed the state of his back. His black shirt was covered by tomato paste. It was also the same on his arms, and she can only guess that it was the same with his front. His hair was a mess, as well. The Bunchins fared much better. They avoided the tomato projectiles while still carrying the groceries they held without spilling a drop. I could have easily handled the situation. Kuranai defended. She felt rather guilty for getting him into trouble. She herself was about to tell off the villagers. Appalled at how they treated the blonde. She had never known that this is how the villagers treated him. Of course she knew a few that gossiped and cursed him behind his back, but never knew that he was physically being abused, as well. Looking at him, she was amazed at how he reacted. He didn't react because the cruel treatment had gone far enough, and that he was sick of the hatred and animosity they showed him. No. He was used to it. No one should be used to such harsh treatment. Looking at him she could only imagine the animosity and abuse that he had gone through most of his life. Suffered in the same village that he was trying to protect and serve. He only retaliated because she got caught in the firing line. She shuddered at the thought. What if she had not been with him? Would he just endure the abuse? Would he just stand there and let them continue to abuse him emotionally, mentally, and physically? Nekurunai sensei do you think the other girls like the stuff I bought for them? He turned around wearing a grin. Kurunai nearly cried. His grin didn't meet his eyes. His eyes had gone duller, as if a part of him died. Naruto. She managed to say. Her words were shaky. Naruto then turned around and looked forward his hands behind the back of his head, giving anyone who cared enough to look that he was relaxed. But Kuranai knew better. I'm sure they will she finally managed to say. The Naruto replied back, as he continued to walk. Well they better. One of the Bunshins spoke up. Yeah, replied the others. Otherwise we will kick your ass. They all shouted in unison. Naruto turned around and stuck his tongue out at the Bunshins. I'd like to see you guys try. Baka. Naruto angrily retorted to his Bunshins. Fortunately, they were already at the Kinoichi Inn. Hearing the commotion the other girls came out. Seeing the girls come out. The Bunshin simply placed the bags on the floor. All of them began to crack their knuckles in unison, glaring at Naruto. We're at the inn now Naruto, one of the Bunshin spoke. It's time for a little payback, the other Bunshin replied. Adebeo. The others agreed. Kurenai merely shook her head, as she asked the girls to help her carry the groceries towards the inn. A Bunshin's charged Naruto. The girls could hear Naruto from the inside of the inn. Hey watch it you guys. Not in the house. What do you think you're doing? No? Don't use her sangin. Baka. Thanks for watching my video, and make sure to check out the author of this fanfic. Link is in the description. See you next time, till then sayonara.